Hello, Aussies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. If you have a question that you would like to ask, please send it by email to askdave, all one word, at arrl.org, and it will come right straight to me. And you can attach pictures. In fact, they're usually very helpful if you do, and drawings, whatever you might like. Now, the question we're going to answer today is from Jerry Felice, KA4OBT. And his question is kind of in multiple parts. And a couple of things we're going to deal with here is uh, what things set the system impedance and so on. So he says he has a couple questions. Question number one, can you explain why someone would use 200 ohm antenna instead of a 50 ohm antenna? The answer is that the characteristic impedance of an antenna is strictly a function of the antenna geometry. Now, single wire antennas like dipoles, uh, if they're resonant, the center resistance, I'm sorry, the center reactance is in the region of 50 ohms, but actually it's like 30 to say 70 ohms. Furthermore, it is not purely resistive. Very often there is a reactive element. If the antenna is too short, it behaves as if it is capacitive, and so the antenna tuner has to add some inductance, and vice versa. If the antenna is too long, it's inductive, and you have to add a little capacitance at the tuner. The tuner is made to handle both those cases, and most radios these days have tuners built in, and they will handle up to 3 to 1 SWR, uh, which will go from 25 ohms to about 150 ohms. Okay, so uh, the there are other kinds of antennas, delta loops, uh, which are often not resonant antennas in the, the classic sense. The loop can be either four-sided or two-sided, so things like that could change the impedance. So you don't design an antenna uh, for a particular impedance. Rather, you pick an antenna design that has the impedance that you want. 200 ohms uh, you could use with a 4 to 1 ballon and bring it down to 50 ohms uh, to bring back to your station. Now, would the electrical length be longer or shorter? This is not a function of the impedance of the antenna. Um, like I said, short antennas are capacitive at what you want the resonant frequency to be. Antennas that are too long are inductive, and so you can adjust accordingly by making them shorter or longer. If you have a dipole, keep the two halves the same length, otherwise weird things happen at the middle. Now another thing you can do with a dipole is 50 ohms at the middle. As you go out toward the ends, the impedance goes up. You can pick a spot off center where the impedance is 50, is say 100 or 200 ohms, and feed that with a uh, current ballon and the current ballon will allow you to actually feed a, a dipole off center. So you'll need a current ballon and then some sort of a choke ballon because the current ballon is balanced and the coax is not. Another way to feed an antenna is at the ends. Usually a 49 to 1 ballon will do the job. You got 50 ohms going in and 20 450 coming out that will then feed a dipole very well. So um, would, would an antenna radiate at the same as a 50 ohm antenna? And now let's think about this. The radiation ability of an antenna is intrinsic to the antenna itself. Often the antenna will have a sort of intrinsic impedance, sort of like dipoles are assumed to be 50 ohms, when actually they can be anywhere from like 30 to 70 ohms, 
sometimes even further away, you can pick a point on the antenna to feed it where the resonance matches what you are looking for. Okay, now uh, it doesn't have to be 50 ohms to radiate. For example, the reference station antenna, the MFJ2010, is an antenna that is off-center fed, covers all of 40, all of 20, some of 10, and some of 6. So these antenna coverages cover them with the impedance, uh, what they are. Okay, uh, would a tuner be required to get a low SWR? Well, your uh, radio, if it's a transistor radio, and I'm assuming it is, the modern transistor radio with transistor finals, um, it wants to see 50 ohms. So there has to be something between it and the antenna that convert that 50 ohms into whatever the feed point is of your uh, radiating antenna. And that's usually just an antenna tuner. Uh, you try to pick a feed line that's got an impedance that's close enough to the antenna, like you can use ladder line, uh, 450 ohm ladder line, often called window line. There is true ladder line, which is 600 ohms and quite a royal pain to deal with, but that is available also. And you may need to throw a ballon in there. Remember that the ballon ratio is the square of the turns ratio. So if you have a turns ratio of two to one, you have a uh, ballon ratio of four to one. So that would take 50 ohm antenna and convert it to 200 ohms, or a nine to one, which would convert it to 450 ohms, which would then match the ladder line. Question, where can I find the formula on calculating the length for a 200 ohm antenna? And the answer is there isn't one. Impedance is a feature of an antenna, not a um, design requirement per se. Now, obviously, if you've got a dipole, you can find a point at 200 ohms where you would want to feed it. But right there at that feed point, you would want a current ballon. So you have the same current going both ways. So the antenna doesn't really know that the feed is there, except, of course, it's being fed. You would need a 4 to 1 ballon to take your 50 to 200 ohms. It's easier, of course, to simply purchase an antenna that's got that ballon in it already, such as the MFJ 2010. So you don't start with impedance, you end up with it. You design an antenna like a delta loop or something like that. You can measure the impedance or calculate it using uh, the software, such as Easy NEC, which is now free. And then the purpose of the antenna tuner and any balance you have in there is to make sure that by the time it gets down to the radio, it looks like 50 ohms. I hope that answers your question. If not, uh, send me an email. Okay, so there you have it. We kind of looked into the idea that antennas have different characteristic impedances. A dipole has a characteristic impedance of around 50 ohms at the center. Uh, other antennas can have uh, sometimes radically different characteristic impedances. All this has to be matched up to work with a 50 ohm transceiver. Thank you very much for all that you do to help support this channel. This video is being brought to, to you by you. You are the sponsors through Patreon, PayPal, and all of these other forms. There's even a little bit of merchandise down at, underneath at the video description. If you have any questions, send them to askdave at arrl.org. And until we next meet, 73.